Brad Perez here, co-founder of Philosophorian, Seth's Teacher's Aid, unofficially. Uh, let's talk about grading. Now, I want to cover some misconceptions that people have about grading. Let's get that out of the way first, and then I'll talk about characteristics of A through F papers. <laughs> Gaming your grades, doing as little as possible to get as good of a grade as you can. It usually shows. Philosophy is about looking at the structure of ideas. It's hard to show that you understand the structure of ideas with putting as little effort as possible into it. And it's you know, disrespectful to yourself, to your teachers, to the institution of education, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to soapbox here, but um, I don't respect it, and you shouldn't either. Don't try to figure out what your teacher wants. Don't try to figure out what Seth wants you to say. That is not what these assignments are about. And if you try to do that, you are already on the wrong path. Don't expect high school effort to get you college grade results. Um, not gonna happen. You're gonna have to try harder. That's because you're at the next level. College is harder. It's, you know, the next step. Simply turning in a paper on time is not a recipe for a B. Uh, yeah, it's good that you turned your paper in on time, but it's also expected. Weird assumption that students have. The memorization and cramming technique doesn't work with philosophy. This is not having the answers, the times and the dates and regurgitating the information to show that you acquired it. Uh, philosophy is not about acquiring information. It is about understanding ideas. And, uh, oh, right, yeah. If you spent a lot of time on your paper, that doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> Now let's discuss the characteristics of different levels of grades. Let's start with A, because that's what you want to get. An A paper demonstrates a thorough and nuanced understanding of the ideas that you've been asked to show that you understand. The way that you do this is by explaining with your own words how the idea works, and you use your own examples of how that idea works. When you use the philosophers examples or the examples that are in the book you demonstrate that you read when you use the teachers examples you demonstrate that you showed up to class uh, what you're aiming to do is demonstrate that you understand what you've been asked to understand an a paper addresses why the philosophy or theory even matters what kind of implications does this have for living for the real world the real world um, why does it matter? Who cares? You anticipate and deal with ideas that have to be engaged in in order to deal with the question. Huh? So let me give you an example of what I mean. There was an ancient philosophy class with this question assigned. Can words ever establish the mind's arrival at truth? Now, in order to write an A-level paper in response to that question, what one would have to do is define how one is to establish something and why you have defined it that way. Also, how are you using the term truth? And what are your reasons for using the term truth that way? Then you can begin to respond to the question, can words ever establish the mind's arrival at truth? So you have to be able to anticipate what must be understood in order to um, respond to a question in order to have an A paper. The structure of an A paper demonstrates the understanding of ideas by addressing the problems or objections to the ideas as they arise. Yeah! If you know that there are problems or objections and you just throw it in a whole paragraph somewhere, all of the objections and all of the responses to it, you haven't shown that you understand how that all fits together. A papers show an understanding of the ideas, problems, and responses to those problems in the structure of the paper itself.
B papers show that you get it, but that's not necessarily thoroughly demonstrated. And you might be a little bit off, especially with the nuance, or the nuance itself is not ever addressed. Uh, it leans a little bit too much on quotes to do the explaining. Uh, it also expects the professor to already know what you're trying to say, especially with the details, and generally leaves the significance of the ideas up to the reader. And even though that is your philosophy, professor, it is your job to demonstrate that you understand what the significance of the ideas are. Back to that ancient philosophy example. In a B paper, there is an understanding that ideas need to be unpacked, but not necessarily a thorough demonstration of how that should be done. So with that question, can words ever establish the mind's arrival at truth, what a B paper will usually do is define what is meant by establish, define what is meant by truth, but not give reasons for it, um, and then continue on with the question. Without giving the reasons for the definitions, you've often precluded the possibility of demonstrating what the significance of the ideas are later on in your paper. C papers, if you try to put as much as you could possibly think of that you've seen in the book or took notes on in class into one paper to try to show that you get it, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, what ends up happening in a C paper is there's a lot of description and very little reasoning, if any at all. Um, writing is often a problem in C papers. A few different things can go wrong with your writing here. Um, it can be sloppy or undeveloped and that stands in the way of your clarity. Um, it could be mechanical and awkward, so the worst version of the five paragraph essay where you start off with, my thesis is, in transition, I'm going to talk about this next. This is my first point, my second point, my third point, and then in conclusion, I have summarized everything I just said, and that is why I hold my original thesis. People turn papers in like that, and they're really hard to read. Don't do it. It's a C. It's average. It's not good. Um, it's disturbing that that's average. C papers also tend to hide behind big words. They're like the hipster of philosophy papers that way, in a bad way. Uh, and also, they tend to show that they don't actually understand what those big words mean. A C paper will address the ancient philosophy question of can words ever establish the mind's arrival at truth by assuming that we all know uh, what is meant by establish, we all know what is meant by truth, uh, and then continuing with the question from there, or worse yet, give definitions that are tautologies. Tautologies are definitions that are the same as the word themselves. So um, it might define truth as something that is true. Not useful. D papers mention key terms without much description and no reasons or wrong reasons. Uh, they usually totally misunderstand the idea. The way a D paper responds to the question, can words ever establish the mind's arrival at truth, is generally a ramble about words, minds, or truth without ever connecting any of those ideas and without supporting anything with reasons or anything that's relevant to uh, anything that you studied in class. Fs. You wrote an opinion piece that was unsupported or irrelevant or usually both. Or your writing was so bad in the paper that the ideas were unintelligible, in which case you need to take a writing class.